since retiring, you've become a pretty noted, harsh critic of the U.S. government's involvement in Iraq and the misinformation propaganda campaign that took place as far as intelligence goes. We spoke a little bit with former Republican Congressman Bob Ney about information he received, so I'd be interested to hear your thoughts, having been looking at it from the military as opposed to from Congress. When did you first realize certain aspects of this misinformation campaign were ramping up? How did you react? What are your thoughts now, having a little bit more time to look back upon it? Yeah, well, I, in May of 2002, uh, almost a year before the invasion of Iraq, I uh, transferred from one part of OSD uh, plans into another part. And the part that I transferred into was Near East South Asia, which has responsibility for Middle East policy. At the time, early May 2002, uh, I was very surprised to discover that the invasion plan for Iraq had already been approved and was on its second review at the top levels of uh, OSD, the Office of Secretary of Defense. So we hadn't even begun in, in mainstream United States. Uh, the media had not yet really ramped up the propaganda campaign, which of course emanated uh, in large part from the Pentagon and from Dick Cheney's office, from, from the executive level. We hadn't begun to talk the people into war, and yet we were already uh, finalizing, in many ways, this invasion plan. I thought that was was kind of strange. And then, of course, uh, by the end of the, the summer and throughout the fall, the propaganda that I was seeing in the New York Times, on CNN, on Fox News, anywhere that government people were speaking about what was going on, I noticed that... Um, two things. One, much of what they were saying was not supported by intelligence that we were seeing. And the second thing was many of the phraseology, the, the uh, catchphrases, the terms uh, that were being repeated uh, by members of the administration to the public were the same catchphrases that we were also seeing propagandized to us from the Office of Special Plans, which happened to be a sister organization to where I worked. And they provided us with talking points, and apparently they were also providing uh, many uh, uh, people in media and, and around Washington with those same talking points. Now, when we got them, they were marked classified secret. But when I read them in the New York Times, apparently they were cleared. Let, let, let's break that apart because there's so many interesting things yeah, in there. Um, Congressman Bob Ney, former Congressman Bob Ney, pointed out the same thing about Dick Cheney. He said that he, what he believed and what he observed as a member of the House of Representatives was a kind of a campaign led by Dick Cheney to convince George W. Bush that going into Iraq was a good idea. In other words, he it seems to, to coincide with what you say, that the Dick Cheney factor was one of the strongest advocates here in going into Iraq. Well, clearly uh, it was. And, and another uh, thing that happened in the summer of 2002, uh, our staff meeting with Near East South Asia, folks getting together talking about things, uh, the word scooter, was uh, passed around. We need to get this to Scooter. Scooter needs to get this faxed right away this afternoon. And I thought Scooter was a, a general. Oftentimes they have nicknames. And it turns out it was it was Scooter Libby, uh, Dick Cheney's chief of staff. And we, at the level we were at, at the Pentagon, three layers uh, below uh, Rumsfeld, we would never have had direct dealings uh, of that nature with uh, Dick Cheney's office. But in fact, we did. And my boss at NISA, Near East South Asia, uh, had been assigned over there from Dick Cheney's staff, where he had worked for Cheney uh, before he came to the Pentagon. So this network of associates with an agenda, certainly uh, Dick Cheney is a major part of that. But I would take issue with the fact that Dick Cheney had to work really hard to convince uh, George W. Bush to do anything. I mean, George W. Bush was excited about an opportunity to uh, show himself as a strong president. He uh, thought they were actually, I don't think he had any problem with uh, going in and knocking off Saddam Hussein. I mean, this, this uh, you know, r regardless of the tenuous link between 9-11, which certainly we know uh, today and we knew then that there was no link, um, I don't really want to say that Dick Cheney was calling all the shots here. Uh, the president may have been an easy uh, mark, but he was he uh, was very interested in 
in uh, pursuing this line of action. I don't think Cheney had to argue with him too much. You started receiving information which looked to be almost like a propaganda campaign directed first at you and the people you worked with, kind of as a, as a preliminary to starting the propaganda campaign for the American people or simultaneous? Sim simultaneously it, it was. And uh, Near East South Asia was a single office. Over the summer of 2002, a lot of political appointees, uh, 15 to 17 political appointees and a few military people uh, and some professional civilians were brought into our office as additional people. We were kind of hot, desk, hot desking it, I guess you could say. We were told that they would be producing all of the talking points on three subjects, um, Iraq, terrorism and weapons of mass destruction. When we put together papers, which is what we did there, put together papers for the higher ups, uh, policy papers, uh, and, and, you know, summaries of intelligence, that kind of thing. When we did that, if we had anything to say about um, Iraq, WMD or terrorism, uh, we would not say it by looking, we would not extract it from the intelligence, we would not review the latest stuff. We would simply place a phone call to the Office of Special Plans and when the, within a day or two, these talking points would be, and we were directed, they would be included in their in entirety without modification uh, and no deletions. All of that would go into all of our, 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 uh, our papers that we were putting together. We looked at what they were saying and noticed that it was very um, propagandistic. It did not match the intelligence. There were leaps of faith made. There were assumptions made and presented as if they were true. So th we're talking 2002. I'm curious yes. if you have any reason to believe any evidence that there was actually a discussion of Iraq that predated 9-11. In other words, many have the theory that really there was a, a, the idea and the goal of going into Iraq. 9-11 created a convenient kind of a, a straw man argument to go in there, but that the plans predated 9-11. Do you can you speak to that at all? Well, it's it's uh, I don't have any particular knowledge that other people do not have. Uh, you know, we had the uh, project for New American Century had long talked about and had advocated, I think, under uh, had, had pushed Clinton for many years to uh, attack Iraq, to take out Saddam Hussein. In fact, in 1998, after the Monica Lewinsky scandal, you know, we we did uh, I forget the name of that operation, but we spent a week or so uh, bombing Iraq. And this was something that was cheered by the neoconservatives at that time. This is long before uh, George W. Bush is, is really anywhere close to being uh, the president. I think the other public evidence that we all have, and I'm not particularly privy to it, is um, George Bush's own statements um, and writings after he left office where, um, and, and what people have written about uh, his own uh, other people's memoirs where Bush uh, Jr. or Bush 43 was very interested in uh, maybe completing what his father had not done in some way in 1991 and and certainly he's being egged on a great deal by the neoconservatives who were who were lobbying uh, Clinton as well to do this under Clinton's presidency and there is no doubt of course that the events of 9-11 uh, you know, I mean, Rumsfeld's running around uh, less than a day afterwards saying dig up stuff on Iraq because this, this may be the opportunity. Well, the opportunity is for something that many people had been speaking of publicly for many years. So that's, that's not really secret. Um, that we would go as far as we did to lie and to falsify information that's put out to the American people trying to link Saddam Hussein to 9-11 and trying to link Saddam Hussein to Al-Qaeda, both of those linkages were fabricated. They did not exist. They uh, logically would never have existed. Uh, you know, here we have Saddam Hussein as a secular person. He, he was enemy number two behind the United States of, of uh, the Al-Qaeda leader. We just have about a minute left, and I'm curious to get your thoughts on, other than Iraq, when you look back at 9-11, uh, what's your biggest concern or what stands out most glaringly, glaringly to you that was done under the guise of being a response to or logical sequence from 9-11? In other words, Patriot Act, surveillance and wiretapping type stuff, um, other Middle East policy. I mean, what comes up for you that's most concerning where 9-11 was used in a misinformation campaign? You named a couple of them, but I think for me, given my uh, focus uh, to some extent on the foreign, the overseas policy, military type stuff, I was very surprised that from the beginning we intended to construct permanent military bases in Afghanistan. 
um, that we would really uh, move forward in setting up a puppet leader who is still in place today, uh, Hamid Karzai, and building military bases uh, which are strategically located to secure and help secure uh, pipelines. That that you know, this sounds like a very um, you know economic trade oriented type of thing, and yet. Uh, here we use 9-11 to occupy and, and build what we wanted to build in a permanent sense in Afghanistan. And I think, uh, you know, what we're hearing, 2024, we won't leave Afghanistan. And I think that was very much uh, envisioned by the people that used 9-11 as a uh, mechanism to get some of the uh, uh, militaristic foreign policies that they wanted. So that surprised me. I did not, I have to admit, I did not see... Uh, uh, the Patriot Act coming, and I think most of the people in Congress who who have voted for it did not see it coming. I know for a fact they did not read it. So uh, you know, it's it's uh, it's an ugly, ugly thing.